Francina Norman was raised in the ghetto, but her life took a royal change in the road when she heard the audible voice of God caught up into heaven on this edition of It's Supernatural. Life after death experiences and angelic communications are on the increase. Terminally ill patients whom doctors have given no hope are unexplainably cured. People are being mysteriously protected from natural disasters. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, examines this invisible world on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. And what happens when you have asthma and what was it, Francina Norman, your uh, grandmother took you to a tent meeting of an evangelist? It was actually a neighbor. A neighbor? Uh, yes. And uh, you didn't know what was going on, really? No. Uh, and, and what happened? Well, I was in and out of the hospital every holiday because I suffered from asthma. Anytime mm -hmm. I got excited. And the lady, the neighbor across the street who was Pentecostal because my parents, they were not. In fact, they were not regular attendees of church. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm going to take you to a a revival and I had no idea who I was going to and so when she took me to the revival I was eight years old the place it was packed thousands and thousands of people and so you had to go through the prayer line there was a lot of elders at now the time. Now this was you didn't know it at the time no. but this was A.A. A. Allen yes, who correct. was a man that I don't think this generation has seen miracles that uh, that has that have occurred under this man, A.A. A. Allen. But you knew nothing, an eight-year-old child, you knew nothing from nothing. So what else happened? So as, you know, as I went through the prayer line, and he, he, you end up in front of him. And when I got to him, he stopped the service. The music was going, the choir was mm -hmm. singing. He stopped the service and he asked the question, whose child is this? And my neighbor was behind me and she said, this is my neighbor's child. And he says, this child has a prophetic anointing on her life and she shall minister to the nation, and she shall prophesy, and she will go places that a, a, a person of her caliber have never been, her race or her gender. And then, and then he said, and God is going to heal her from asthma. And he told me to raise my hands. And when I raised my hands, oil started pouring out of my hands. And I was so afraid. Well, yeah, I was wondering, what's <laughs> a, you must have been fearful. This is kind of strange. <laughs> and I was, my knees started knocking because it was almost like a presence that just touched me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet and I couldn't and understand this. I'm only eight years old yeah. and I was not raised in a setting like that. And so my knees got weak and uh, I started crying uncontrollably and I didn't understand why am I crying? Mm -hmm. No one is harming me. But it was a peace that came over me. And when he prayed for me, the oil came out of my hands. And he said, also, you will never suffer from asthma from this point on. And I went completely out. And I was out the entire service. Because when I came back to, everybody was gone. The lights were cut off and they were trying to get me up. But as I was out, the Lord just showed me heaven. He showed me angels. He showed me, I, he started showing me visions of me as an adult. I knew how I looked as an adult at that particular time. That's amazing. Because God showed it to me. And I was like, I could not explain. In fact, I couldn't talk the whole time for at least two hours on the way home. Bottom line, what happened to the asthma? No more asthma. Never suffered from asthma, never had an attack. From that point on, total healing. And just out of curiosity, I've never seen an angel. Of course, you were eight years old, but mm -hmm. what's an angel look like? And you know, everybody's always, the thing about it is I never saw the face. Uh -huh. And I've seen angels several times. I saw the wings. And you know, it's, it scribes in the Bible, we always look at angels as having two wings. But there are different sections, there are different types of angels, cherubims, and there's different angels. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the archangel and all that, because they have their organization. But this angel, the angels that I saw, they had like six wings. And it was like, <laughs> I didn't never see the face. But I could see them flying up in heaven and they were just, it, it was, no one bumped up into each other and they just kept crying out, holy, holy, holy is the lamb, holy is the lamb, B uh, blessings and glory and honor and praise and dominion and power. All right, you had the asthma, the bad stuff taken away, but then a gift 
started operating. And you know, I, this is just a theory on my part. This was such an unusual great man of God, A.A. A. Allen, that there is what is known as a transfer of anointing. And I believe that when he prayed for you, something happened that was good. You began to know things that your mind had never been told. Like, tell me the first thing you remember. The first thing was, I knew there was a change in my life. But mind you now, I did not get saved. I did not accept Christ in my life. I didn't know anything about that. I just had that experience. No one at that time led me to the Lord. I was up there for healing. So when I got back home, uh, the, the, like a couple of days later, I turned to my mother. I said, the neighbor, her name was Miss Brown. I said, I saw her house. I could see it. Her house is going to get burnt down, and you need, you need to tell her to don't be at her house a certain time because it, it's a, it, I, I, I couldn't explain it. Actually, it was like electrical wiring, but I didn't say that. I said, wires going to get crossed and burn the house down. How would your mother react? She looked at me like I was crazy. I'm sure. <laughs> so she didn't even respond. She was like, girl, go sit down. I mean, I, I picture my eight-year-old daughter <laughs> running up to me and saying, uh, Dad, next door neighbor's house is going to burn down from some wiring type problem. Right. So what happened? The very next day, I told her, my mother the time mm. and everything. The very next day at that time. You, you, you knew it was the next day and yeah, the time? and the time. Six that's o'clock. That's very precise. Yep, it was. I knew the time and everything. At six o'clock, the and I and, and I said and all I said was, well, I gotta just and I'm I'm praying to God that I don't know, and I'm like God would just please don't let her be in the house, and He heard my prayer, because the very next day at six o'clock you hear the ambulance. You know this mm -hmm. is a big event, right. you know in the, in, the, in in the ghetto when something happened like that because we're so close knit, the house was burning down. The fireman was there and she was at work, and when she came home she lost everything. And then from that point on, it just started flowing. Out of curiosity, when you look at someone, do you always know something? Yes. You know, yes. it's just by... And, and, just by talking and, on the phone. And, and, and let me ask you this. What do you know about this person? Do you see it? Do you hear it? Do you think it? What, how did, how is, All of the above. <laughs> now, now listen, uh, the New Testament says that the true believer is to provoke the Jew to jealousy. Now, you know I happen to be Jewish, and I'm going to tell you something. You are provoking me to jealousy. But as a famous man said, you ain't seen anything yet. Don't you dare go away, because we're going to find out what she knows, maybe, just maybe, about you. We'll return to more of Sid Roth and It's Supernatural. Hi, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I'm so caught up with talking to Francina Norman. I mean, can you imagine? As a young eight-year-old, she gets healed of asthma. She falls out under a presence of God. She sees angels, and then she begins knowing things, just really knowing things yes. that are going to happen in the future. Uh, but you got very, very sick one time. Uh, were you about ready to die in the hospital? Yes, but you know, as a result of that anointing that mm -hmm. came on me, the prophetic anointing that, that God was calling me into, all through school, at that point, I didn't have to study. How I was were your grades? so gifted. How My were grades, your grades were straight A's because I would sit there and hear the teacher talk, and when it was time for a test, I could still hear her in the spirit talk that when I was taking the test, it was almost like somebody was recording that in my ears. I, I guess that's kind of unusual for someone raised in the ghetto right. to get straight A's. Right. So they recognized you were gifted. So everybody, it, it got to the point that everybody in the neighborhood was like pushing for me that she's going to come out of this and she's going to come back and be a blessing to us. And so, and, and then as a result of that, there's someone that just kept hounding me to get saved. 
And I kept giving God excuses. Okay, wait till I do this because I was involved with so many things. I mean, you know, going to Spain, got picked to go to Spain. You, you want to have fun, fun, right. fun before you turn your life over to God, which you know you're going to do anyway. Right. But you, you want to do it on your time. And that's what was happening. So what happened was, as soon as I was like 21 years old, my tonsils, they said, was over large. It was not, mm -hmm. it, it outgrew my body. And they said, and I almost got choked and almost died. So the doctor said, we have to take them out. So I just went in the hospital for a, a TNA, you know, and just to get my tonsils mm -hmm. out. And while I was in the hospital, I got so sick that they couldn't understand what was going on. I was actually deteri deteriorating. I mean, my body was, I was losing. I couldn't keep anything on my stomach. Yeah, you the, know what I found, Francina? What I have found is many people that have a call of God on their life, somewhere along the line, it, it's like it, they try to snuff it out. Like I understand you had a stepfather mm -hmm. uh, that was an alcoholic and abusive. Yes. And But this sounds even worse. You're, were you actually dying? Yes. And they, they didn't understand why. And even the challenges, because, you know, it's almost like what David when David took the distress and he took the outcasts and he took those that didn't have any money, the ones that Saul didn't want, and he took them into the cave and he built up their confidence that they came out and whipped Saul. And they were just like nobody, nobody mm -hmm. wanted. And you know, even, even marked in the ghetto, you do good if you walk out of here just finishing high school. And my goal was I want to go to college, I want to do more. But at the same time, I knew God was calling me but I wanted to do my own thing. But when I got in the hospital, there was another lady in the hospital, she had just had a hysterectomy and she was moaning all night. And I was sitting there saying, God, am I gonna die? And the girl that was hounding me to get saved, she came by the hospital and she said, you need to get saved. And I was like, leave me alone. And I was sitting in the hospital, I never forget. And it was like four o'clock in the morning and I heard my name, Francina, audibly. Who, who was speaking to you? He said, this is God. He identified himself. He said, first, the first time he said, Francina, give, if you want to live, give your heart to me. So then I thought the lady said that, but she was out cold from her medication, you know. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I must be hearing things. Then it said, again, Francina, this is God. If you give your life to me, I'll totally heal you. So then it said... Hey, excuse me, I don't think you had much of a choice. Yeah. If you don't give your life to him, you're, you're dead. So then he says, so I said, uh, you know, so then he says, Francina, this is God. I need you to do something in this world that only you could do. You were born to do it. Give your life to me. And when God said that he needed me, just to think that Almighty God, because we've been taught God don't need you, and that's not true. He does. He ha we're born for a specific purpose to fulfill His purpose in our life. Do you believe that's true for everyone? Yes. Francina? Yes, everybody. There's You're a destiny. Not, right. Everybody's got a destiny and everybody's got a purpose. God would not put you on this earth like it's some case, Sarah, Sarah, whatever it'll be, it'll be. God had a purpose for you. The Bible says that we were formed before the foundation of the world. And so I believe that, that, you know, it's just like if someone is pregnant, you don't wait till the baby come to provide for it. You prepare, prepare for the birth. Yes. And that's what God does. He prepare us for a specific job and then he have you born to do the job. And I believe that. And so when he said that nobody was around, it wasn't a preacher. The young lady that wanted me to get saved, no one was around. And I said, God, I surrender to you and I accept this to tell me what's going on in my life. Why am I seeing things? What am I called? I, I would imagine <laughs> that you had a lot of questions. <laughs> Why am I like this? And then the Lord came into my life. And I'm telling you, the next day, I, when the doctors came, I said, okay, I'm ready to go home now because I have to go to church. He said, you're crazy. I said, I, I, check, check everything. I'm, I'm totally healed. And they checked everything, they could not believe it. Everything was functioning, everything, all my vital organs they were failing. But at that time, everything stopped functioning properly. I got out of the hospital in less than two hours. Church was there, it was that Sunday, church was that Sunday, I went to church. When they had an altar call, I was the first one up there, nobody had that, because the girl thought she was gonna have to push me up there. And when I, when I, when I received Christ into my life in the hospital, but when I went to that church, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I heard angels, I could hear, I could hear music saying, it's sealed. 
by the Holy Spirit. And I was like, what is sealed? And what God was really saying is, my prophetess is getting ready to go forth now. What are you called for? What has God shown My you? My purpose is so good. I'm so thankful that I know it now. My purpose is God has given me a gift that I'm called to the nation to prophesy and to minister to the nation. I minister to politicians. I minister to poor people. I minister to everybody in all walks of life. My purpose is to speak prophetically over their life. He's given me the gift of discernment that even with your child, with your children, I can tell what spirit is lurking on them and take authority over it before it actually starts manifesting. Give me an example of that. An example. I was at a, a meeting one time and I, I, I saw a homosexual spirit, you know, generational spirits travel from generation. You What's know? A, what, just what is a homosexual uh, spirit look okay. like? Okay. Well, when, when I say a homosexual spirit, it's like I didn't act, when I say I see a homosexual spirit, what, I say, what I'm saying is when I'm looking at that person, the Holy Spirit is saying they're battling with a homosexual spirit mm. like that. All right. Now how old or, was this person? This person was only five years old. Five years old? Yeah. What, was it's he a lurking. homosexual? It, the spirit was lurking. Nothing had been manifested yet. Uh -huh. And what happened is, when I say generational spirits, yes. for instance, uh, Abraham lied about Sarah being his wife twice. Forty years later, his son Isaac lied too. Yeah, the Bible says these spirits pass on to four generations. Right. and it traveled. Hmm. So, but we have the power that we could speak that and we could take authority over that and we could close those doors and we could break those generational spirits. So this is, I saw it on this child. So I went to the parent and I, and I said to the parent, I see this on your child and is, all, if it's, is it all right if I take authority over it? They wouldn't receive it. Three years ago, I was in Miami in a service and that mother came up to me and said, do you remember me? And I said, yes, I do. She said, I was the one that you said but my son was and I and I didn't receive it and she said my son is actually practicing homosexuality oh listen you better receive what Francina is going to tell you right back in a moment we'll return to more of it's supernatural right after this Hello, it's Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I am so looking forward to what is going to happen right now because the gifting that God gave to Francina Norman, I've asked her and she says, yes, she's ready. She wants to move in the prophetic calling that she received as a little eight-year-old child. Well, Francina, you've learned a lot over these years because sometimes we have gifts and we don't know how to operate with them. But at this point, God's taught you a lot. What is he showing you right now? Well, as, I, as, as I'm, I'm, we're talking, I want, to, I want people to understand, too, that there's two things I made a promise to God when I, un, when I started understanding what the calling was. One, I would not prostitute the anointing. Two, I would never merchandise the prophetic. And that's important. That's dangerous. That, cause it's, because when, you, when you're moving like that and God is showing you the heartbeat of people, what comes with it is power and you can abuse it mm. and you have to be real careful. So that's why I keep a prayer life. And I, and I want you to understand something too. As I was talking to you, see what we need to understand is that God always call us to the world. God never said he loved the church. The Bible says that Jesus came. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world. And as a result of that, of loving the world, he always called, when he's talking about Israel, he's talking about the nation. He's always concerned about what's happening with the nation. And so even the work that you're doing, even the gift that you have, even where, you know, the understanding and your desire to know, want to know more and more about the supernatural, want to know more and more about God and the hunger and thirst after God and the righteousness and all the, even the line and even this, even the, all the obstacles that you had to go through to get to the point where you are right now. The Lord told me to tell you, you have not seen anything yet. And the Lord also said that he's going to restore your health. Not just me knowing that you had a cold, but God's going to touch you completely in your body. Because the Lord showed me 
when I was when I saw you in the green room, the Lord showed me that you needed a healing in your body. And God was going to touch you. He was going to touch you in those areas. And God said that you, the step that you're going is nothing compared to where he's getting ready to take you. He said, you're going to be a mouthpiece. For the nation of Israel, you will be a mouthpiece. God said, I will open up the door and they will come at your feet. And God said, he's going to start imparting in you gifts. He said, I'm going to give you gifts that you will begin to see in the supernatural. He said, you know why I'm doing it? Because I could trust you. You have stood the test and I could trust you with it. And then the Lord told me to tell you there's a concern about a family member. And God said, it's a done deal. I've already worked it out. He said, I've already worked it out. And even as I look into the cameras right now, because he'll be able to tell you that I did not discuss anything with you. In fact, I, I, I have to tell you this right now. She is hitting major major areas and of all the guests over the next few weeks she's the only one that knew almost nothing about me and I knew almost nothing about her so I verify that and, and then on, 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 on top of that the Lord says don't be concerned about the finances because God says I've got ordained people that's been ordained by me that's gonna give you the funds that you need to do this you know, project. Francine, I almost feel like shaking as you're talking. It's like the Spirit of God is, is hitting me. It, this is a very supernatural thing. It's not a natural thing. Uh, it, 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 it's like um, he's in me, and I don't know what he's doing. But he's doing something. It's something is being imparted in you. And, 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 you know, later on we could go through, you know, when we have time. Mm -hmm. But see, I also see an airplane. I see you going back and forth, taking stuff, ministering to the, the nation of Israel. I mean, I mean, going into, you know, Israel. And I see you going back and forth. I see God putting, giving you favor and honor among men and women that's going to plant major mm -hmm. seeds into this ministry. And even I see where the enemy tried to attack it financially, where it almost went under. But God said, no, it's ordained. It's appointed by me, and I'm obligated to supply the need. He said, I put that passion in you. That wasn't something that you did. I put it in you, so I'm obligated to take care of it. And then I, as, even as I'm, I'm talking right now, there's some of you that's listening to this show, and there's a young lady right now, and there's a Jewish family listening right now, and I see where the family has been distorted because I see in the spirit where your daughter is involved with someone that's not a believer, that does not believe the way y'all believe and, and, and you're really going through concerning that but the Lord said he speaks I speak peace to you right now in the name of Jesus God told me to take to take your hands off it and relax in him because he is going to work he says that don't 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 put the responsibility up she wasn't trained like this God told me to tell you said that let me work because the seed has already been planted and let me work and let me do what needs to be done there's also so someone listening right now you're very influential in society but you, you, you're trying to hide it but there's a loved one that's strung out on drugs and, and you don't want nobody to know this but God told me to tell you he says that he promised you that he would deliver in the next 30 days write it down 30 days from today God is going to cause this child to lose the, the, the desire to want to take drugs and it will be supernatural and you will know that it's God that's doing it. There's also a businessman that you're going through a major lawsuit and God told me to tell you, he's gonna turn it around in your behalf if you trust him. And you know even your staff, I don't even know anything about where you're located but you're getting ready to move into a bigger place. This thing is gonna be so big, you're gonna have to, I'm telling you, God said nine, this, this year is the year that is getting ready to take off. And you know what I'm gonna tell you, Francina? <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, and I'm going to tell you, because you are special. Just as God had a very special, and has a very special plan for Francina Norman, and has a very special plan for me, he has a special plan for you. But the first thing is, you must come to know him, by repenting of your sins, asking him to forgive you because of the blood of Jesus, and making him not just your Savior, but your Lord, and get to know him. Say, I want to know you. I know I don't know you, but I know that there's something more. Oh God, there must be something more. If this is all there is to life, I might as well just chuck it right now. But I tell you, stop. There is something more. There is a wonderful destiny for your life, and it's like you're on a track and you're going the wrong way. And stop, come to your senses, 
and make him your Lord and say, God, I got to know you in Jesus name. I must know you. There's got to be something more to life than work, eat, sleep, and that's the way it goes. There must be something more. And I tell you, there is. And he loves you. And I ask in Jesus' name that his love would come right upon you, right where you're seated. You would experience the most wonderful outpouring of his spirit because this is your moment. This is your destiny that's being imparted right now. I promise you that you are special in the day that you seek him with all your heart. In that day, he'll be found.